In 1945, Soviet forces liberated the previously independent nation of Hungary and began to ruthlessly purge anyone whom they regarded as an enemy. By 1949, Hungary was a one-party state, abandoned by the West to its Stalinist puppet dictator, Matthias Rakosi, who had virtue signaled his way right to the top of the Communist Party. Under the communist regime, the Hungarians were divided into workers, farmers and intellectuals. The latter were class enemies who lived in fear every night of the knock on the door from that dreaded Arvo, the secret police. Nobody could trust anybody. Anybody could be an informer. Over the following years, the Hungarian economy, forced into the insane communist mould, collapsed. Hungarians were reduced to begging and penury. Peasants were forced off the land and made to work punishing schedules in factories. Some of them worked to death. One man, who openly complained that he used to be rich but now had to beg for cigarettes, was taken away by the secret police and never seen again. In 1953, Stalin died and there was a thaw in the intensity of the purges. Hungarian political prisoners began to be released. Moscow replaced Rakosi with the far less hardline Imre Nagy. Hungarians began to feel that their time for freedom had come even though Imre Nagy was again replaced by Rakosi due to political chicanery. On the 23rd of October 1956, there was a peaceful demonstration against Soviet rule, here in Parliament Square. The police ordered the crowd to disperse. They refused. The crowd marched en masse to the bronze statue of Stalin and tore it down, breaking it into pieces and dancing on the pieces. An ambulance tried to get through the crowd. The crowd stopped the ambulance. It was obvious from the driver's clothes that they were Arvo. The ambulance was full of ammunition. The crowd seized the ammunition. They were now an armed uprising. The headquarters of the Arvo were stormed and the extent of their spy network, torture and lies were revealed. Workers returned to their factories to pick up the guns they'd been manufacturing. Sympathetic soldiers gave away their weapons. The crowd began destroying all symbols of communism everywhere. Shots were fired when the national radio station was marched upon, but this just made the crowd even angrier. The next day, Soviet forces were sent in to quell the uprising, but it was too well organised. Tanks were drawn into narrow alleyways, such as here in Corvin Kos, and blown up with Molotov cocktails. Within five days, the freedom fighters controlled the streets of Budapest, having defeated two Soviet divisions. Any ARV members that were found were summarily executed. The Soviets, who had removed Imre Neige from being too radical, restored him to power. Neige took his chance. He ordered the removal of the Soviet forces. Soviet diplomats fled. Neige began speaking of elections and even of leaving the Warsaw Pact. But this was too much of a humiliation for Khrushchev. On the 4th of November, he ordered the tanks outside the city into Budapest to crush the uprising. They did so mercilessly, destroying buildings, shooting civilians, and rounding up anybody with leaflets or ammunition. The West, of course, did nothing to help, despite the pleas of the Hungarian government. Imin Arj was arrested, secretly executed and buried face down. Thousands were sent to labour camps. 200,000 Hungarians fled the country, such as to Austria and relative freedom. Nars was later disinterred and reburied here at Hungary's National Cemetery. Why should Hungarians trust the West? In particular, why should they trust the West when its dominant ideology is based around gaining power via virtue signalling about equality and the disadvantaged? Wokeness is merely communism for a society of high material wealth. Hungarians know where this leads. They died to oppose it in 1956.
Well, chaps, I hope you enjoyed that mini documentary. It was uh, it was a lot of good fun to make. It was also quite hard work to make. It involved traipsing back and forth across Budapest in the beating summer sun. And uh, of course, you know, I, I, don't, I don't wear shorts. I'm not that degenerate. So I was I was fully suited and booted. And uh, at one point, we, we walked about two hours, I think it was, through Hungary's largest graveyard in search of the grave of Imre Naj. And all we had to go on was that some flower sellers had told us in Hungarian that. Uh, it was a long way away. It was uh, two hours through a mosquito-filled graveyard. Uh, at one point, we were so lost, we put the drone up into the air to try and see if we could find out where we were. And it turned out that it was a, it was a no-fly zone. But we, as you saw, we got there in the end. And if you like content like this, if you enjoy it, then we'd really, really appreciate it if you would become one of our paid subscribers on Substack. It's just $6 a month. What's that? A, the, the, a pint of beer in London these days. And uh, this helps us to, uh, to continue making documentaries like this. This is what we will put towards making an even better documentary uh, on, 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 the, on the fall of intelligence, which we're going to make in America this, uh, this summer. So if you would like to help us out at the Jolly Heretic, then please, please, please subscribe on our Substack, get involved, and uh, we will see you all soon. And goodbye! <laughs>